uh, we're talking about battery storage. What's the demand for batteries going to be like in the next decade, and can it be met? Okay, well, it's, it's going to be huge. It's about, uh, according to the figures of the International Agency of Energy, it's about 11,000 gigawatts uh, per year uh, production. And of, of course, there is a worldwide effort being made to, to meet that, that demand. But it's going to be a major challenge because uh, there are many gigafactories coming into force. And, and of course, it's going to be a challenge. And so what, what do those challenges actually look like? What are the key ones? Well, I, I would say like three, three are, are the key ones. Uh, first is technology, okay, at least in Europe. We don't have the learning curve that the Asian countries have. So that's the first one. The second one is investment. Investments are huge in, the, in these cases. So it's going to be a huge effort in investment. It, it, nevertheless, Europe is, is uh, investing three times more than China in the last three years. So it's, well, it, we, I think that we, we can overpass that challenge as well. And the third one, I would say it's going to be jobs. <laughs> so creating so much jobs that we will, will be required to, to build a complete value chain for, for energy storage and, and specifically for batteries is going to be a major challenge as well. But if all those challenges are met, and particularly the, perhaps the jobs one, what are the opportunities that then th throw themselves open? Well, they are massive opportunities because it's going, it is going to imply uh, many, many uh, kind of, of, of jobs related to, to the battery industry uh, concerning not only to material destruction, ma material, battery grade materials development, uh, of course, research and development, batteries production, uh, applications, and, and, and many other transversal skills such as the digitalization of batteries management, the impact of, uh, uh, of uh, LCA, and, and also uh, the cost, uh, many, many, many skills that will be required. And also, when we think that, uh, well, uh, there are many other value chains that uh, will have a decrease in employment, uh, we may think that there are many people that could be employed for other value changes uh, that can be employed in batteries. So we have to transform that people and to reskill them for the battery ecosystem. Mm. And talking about that value chain and, and transforming, how, how is the current value chain changing? Well, uh, I think that, uh, well, and Europe uh, saw this uh, about four years ago. Uh, the Asian countries have been investing in batteries uh, for years and years now, and, and well, battery, uh, Europe took, took the challenge, uh, and, and so that uh, to reinforce that ecosystem, we had to start from scratch. Uh, Europe is very strong uh, when it comes to power electronics and applications, uh, but cells and materials should be manufactured in Europe as well, so we reinforce all the battery uh, value chain and also uh, taking into account the opportunities that comes within recycling. So uh, this is why Europe uh, pushed that, that policies uh, in, in the battery value ecosystem. And, and uh, well, uh, that is the, the main points that Europe wants to reinforce, the whole value chain, but taking a special uh, focus also in material development in, and in recycling, which are, I would say, the weakest point of, of, of the overall value chain. Hmm. You talked about an ecosystem there. We're here in Bilbao. Mm -hmm. What's the battery ecosystem like here in the Basque Country? Well, I think it's more or less a, a, a replica of, of, of the Europe battery ecosystem. Uh, well, having into a, account that we are a smaller region. But uh, historically, there, there's been a mass, massive uh, investment in elf companies that manufacture modules, manufacture battery packs, that apply uh, energy storage into different applications, uh, main, main, mainly for uh, stationary storage, I would say, not so much for automotive. Uh, well, some companies, we have uh, companies to highlight in heavy duty transport, which, which are well known, but well, there, there is even, there is like a kind of challenge. Um, at the same time, the Basque government, about 10 years ago, when uh, they deployed the, the energy Basque uh, strategy, uh, they did it with that vision of reinforcing the whole value chain from materials to, to recycling. And the outcomes, we are watching them already because now we are deploying, well, just like a gigafactory, which is going to be the first in, in Europe that is going to uh, 
fabricate like uh, solid state batteries. So this is a huge challenge for for the whole sector because they are the holy grail of, of the, ne the next generation of batteries. You've talked about a lot of innovation. Um, what's the one thing that you're most excited about in the sector? Well, uh, I have many things that I'm excited about. Something that we have not mentioned yet is, is heat electrification. There is going to be a huge opportunities on, on that uh, when it comes to uh, raising the efficiency of heat pumps, for example, or raising the rates of uh, energy efficiency that you uh, can target in an industry via using thermal storage applications, for example. But if I should highlight something, I would say for me is, is the digital factory that, manu that will manufacture in the future solid state batteries because it's a major challenge. And uh, in some sense, I, I think we are making history. I think you are. <laughs> I wouldn't disagree with that. Nuria, thanks very much for sharing your expertise with us today. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.